hello um, uh, this is biology classroom um, and the syllabus coursework are 0610 IGCSE uh, classes um, I have shared already a question paper is a topical questions multiple choice and it's about the chapter of the organization of the organisms um, the first question paper. I want to have a discussion on the answers for those that maybe have some problem with these um, actually type of the questions that which is given in this chapter. Question number one. First, please make sure that you have understood, read and understood the question very well. And then if you can guess, if you really know the answer, just go for the answer. If you do not know, there is another option or another way to guess the answer. It's just by, by omitting those answers that I think that is wrong. So till we reach to the uh, answer, the real answer. Which row uh, matches the cell membrane? and cell wall of a palisade cell to their functions. So we want to know which of these two actually matches the uh, function of these kind of uh, cell membrane and cell wall. So the I want to match the information here with here. What is this? Is the uh, part of the cell so remember a cell wall and these are the functions of them i mean the role or the job of these um actually membranes or the tissues so cell membrane what does it do inside a cell or a cell um the cell membrane is a, as i told you before it is also called as partially permeable membrane the partially permeable membrane, it means that it allows only some or selected uh, type of the materials to move in and out of cell. So it's quite selective. It doesn't let anything like easily to pass through cell wall. Cell wall is quite rigid. It's made of acidities and this kind of uh, molecule or the chemical matter is very hard. And so it helps the cell, uh, plant cell to keep its shape, to give it shape. It doesn't let it to, when it is gets like too much water in, to burst, or oh, it doesn't let the, uh, to the, easily to change its shape. So it is very strong in nature. The cell membrane, um, so surrounds the cell and also uh, is kind of protected inside uh, contents of the cells. It doesn't let them to just go scattered out. So it's hold the thing within inside the cell. By knowing this, if I know this information, I can easily find the maybe just match what actually my mind with one of these options. The cell membrane is actually uh spending the transport of the matters and active transport so that's correct but cell membrane cannot be supported so we are suspicious about that you don't know which one to choose you just know that the cell membrane is not a support support is something like you put to something to make it uh, to um I will call it as is make it stronger to, for example, you put a support near a plant to just help it to stay or to stand upward or still. So it may, is, this is support is a job of the cell wall. It's something, these kind of the strong tissues, they can give support to the things or to the plants. So cell wall uh, actually, there is, it is uh, called as fully permeable membrane it means that it allows everything to pass through or just go in and out so everything can pass through so it doesn't actually involve into those that's kind of selective special type of the transport of the matters 
So the role of the cell wall is not about the transport, it's just keep the shape and support to the whole cell. So why again, by knowing this, I know that cell membrane is active transport, the role, and also cell wall is a support, so the answer should be B. Question number two, in a plant, what is formed by a group of xylem cells? A group of xylem cells. The xylem cells, you remember that they are actually made up of uh, the cells, that the cells are like placed to each other uh, alongside uh, actually just uh, end to end. And the one in, in, the, in between the cells, uh, one part of the cell wall actually is uh, uh, destroyed and it doesn't exist. So it is like become a hollow tube. It is empty tube. So that is for just to let the water, mineral, everything to go up the plant when it is actually taken by the root hair cells, then go into the xylem and then go everywhere into the plant, leaves and other parts. So it can be minerals, ions, it can be water from the root. So in a plant, what is formed by a group of xylem cells, of xylem vessels? So the xylem vessels, they make an, uh, a tissue. So the answer is B. The answer should be, I just want to explain a bit about uh, the xylem tissue, uh, what actually we call a tissue. Uh, there are two types of the um, actually vessels inside the plant. One of them is xylem, and the other one is phloem. Xylem transports the water, mineral, and other nutrients from the soil, and and then send it all the way, transport it all the way to the plant stem, and then send it to the other parts upper parts of the plant, like the leaves and the others. Phloem is another vessel that in the plant vessel is like our blood vessel, there is not blood in it, sir, by transport like uh, food and all the uh, things that are being made during photosynthesis in the uh, plant leaves and send it all the way to the other parts of the plant to, for use. And these two vessels together, they are called as va uh, vascular bundle, xylem and phloem. Each of them is a separate tissue, a specialized tissue. Xylem is called a tissue because it's a group of the similar cells that are actually joined together and work together to accomplish a main aim or purpose, for a plain purpose, to do the same function. The function is to transport water, okay, of the plant. And um, as you can see, these cells actually are not a complete cell in the xylem. They are dead. And this is one cell, this is two, three. They are actually joined together in length. And the wall within them actually disappear. It doesn't exist anymore, some part of it. So the water is become like a hollow tube, so the water can move into it easily. Flow actually contract to the xylem is a living tissue, and the group of the cell attached together from the length, and they transport the nutrients that are made of the food which is made in the during photosynthesis. And they are living cells, so because they are similar cells, again, grouped together to do the same function, they are called phloem is a tissue, xylem is a tissue. Okay, so these are called as tissues. So the answer of that question can be. Now, look at this question, question number three. What sort of the functions of the xylem vessels? Um, Again, I go one, one, one. If you know the answer, just directly choose the correct answer. If you have no, or you have not forgotten anything, but if you are not sure about your answer, there are other options available that you just choose those ones. 
um, that are not actually the answer and then omit them from the selection and what is left at the end is the answer. But for, I just want to go through them one by one. Absorption. A xylem vessel is a dead tissue and is um, actually is in the stem of the um, plant. So if there is no absorption of the material, minerals or the nutrients in it, this is definitely a no. So the sheet between C and D we have to choose. So I already reject A and B. So the answer could be either C or D. So now, conduction. Conduction is mean the transport of the matters, it's the transport of the nutrients to transport them from one side to another. Is it the job of the xylem? Yes, it transports or conducts water and the minerals from the soil to leaves. So that's answer. I don't continue reading the rest because I want to save my time to the exam. But if I want to discuss with you, does it do photosynthesis? Of course, no, because there is no leaf. Um, the uh, photosynthesis happens in the leaf structure, in the leaf, in the leaf part of the plant. And the support, yes, it gives support because, because xylem is quite rigid, is uh, hold the stem upright. It helps it to stand upright. So it is a support and also a mean for conducting matters or uh, transporting the matters like water, minerals, and other ions. So our answer here is C. Question number four, a gene for insulin is taken from a human cell and placed in a bacterium. Bacteriums are prokaryotes. So the bacterium can then make human insulin. What is this process called? Um, in the matter of the genetic engineering, I want to pause the video for a while and show you that how it works. In artificial selections, is like you um, select those animals with the trait that you are you desire. For example, you have um, you will need vegetables to plant that they need less water or they are more leafy or they are more, for example, um, we'll say they are more, for example, resistant against any pests, uh, infection or any other things or drought. And uh, you choose them and then cross them together, the male and the female and the next generation again and again, you choose again those uh, traits that are again you want and again you cross the female and the male selected ones together until you get a pure uh, generation with that kind of uh, genes in them in the, that trait in them that you really want so this is kind of artificial selection or breeding and um, it is happening manual in the lab or by a, a human actually uh, is controlled by the human uh, and the human being is directing it in the lab. So it's quite artificial, it's not natural, it doesn't happen there. So it just, the process is like in a bigger scale of the genetic engineering. It's not a genetic engineering, it's just more about genes, it's about inherited uh, traits of the, in the, of the genes in the next generation. But in the next uh, option, in genetic engineering, uh, the, the actual scientists, they come and they take out one uh, a gene from the chromosome and cut it and place it inside the uh, genes of the bacteria, for example, another cell. So it's from one cell to another cell. We transfer the genetic information and we cut and replace. Uh, usually, uh, the best option is uh, the plasmid of the uh, bacteria. So because it's very simple and a structure and it can actually be passed into the next generations too. And uh, that's how they work with it. And it usually it controls the, actually the genes that are responsible for the, uh, for example, antibiotic resistance. So that's why they usually, uh, they work out with the plasmid. And what is the plasmid of the bacteria? 
That's what you see. This is a bacterium, and this is the main chromosome. But is it a strand? Is one a strand only? And it doesn't have. Uh, is like a loop of the chromosome. It doesn't have any uh, beginning or the end. And the oplasmids, the circular DNAs, that they use in genetic uh, engineering. As you can see in this diagram, the genetic engineering, you have two cells. One of these is a bacterium, and is this one another cell, or is it a human cell? In this question, is that there is a resample part of the chromosome, and these kind, this part of the chromosome, these genes are actually sliced up, and they are responsible for the controlling, for example, formation of the insulin. So they take it out, and then from the other side, from the bacterium, they uh, take the plasmid, and they put uh, this part of the plasma with the enzyme and remove the gene and then insert, insert this one, the gene from the responsible for the insulin uh, formation, they put it inside, insert it inside the, uh, this loop. And after that, they put it back inside the bacterium and the bacterium here, uh, which is actually uh, has the plasmid with, uh, with the uh, gene inserted in the bacterium. And then it actually started repro starts reprodu reproducing and uh, also the plasmid start becoming more and more, they uh, produce more plasmids. And these new uh, bacterium that you see, bacteria that you see here, they contain genes and the plasmids, uh, they contain uh, genes that are responsible for all, actually responsible for uh, production of the insulin. So this is how they do the genetic uh, engineering by this process. So this is the meaning of genetic engineering. The first one uh, was not the answer. This is the answer of this question. So the gene engineering. Now you may ask me, so how about the next, for example? And now we know the answer is B, but I want to just discuss the rest. Uh, what is the heterozygous inheritance? You can have this kind of the uh, gene transfer or manipulation happens naturally. Is passing the genes uh, from parents uh, into the next generation, into the offspring, into the babies. And usually uh, heterozygous, it means that the genes are not the same or different, one is very dominant, the other one is uh, recessive, it doesn't show, so it's weaker, there's one more and stronger. So there are two different genes. Um, but the different forms of a gene, so uh, the, the phenotype, uh, the genotypes, sorry, the genotypes here are different, but when you are uh, homozygous, it means that the both genes are the same. Um, they are both either uh, recessive or either Dominant. I mean, they are both strong and they show, or they are both um, recessive and they are weak. So, for example, um, any any form of the uh, I won't show you what does that mean. For example, here this is the parent, the parent that, for example, they have a heterozygous uh, genotype because one is F capital, one is F small, there are two, two um, forms of a, for example, a gene. Uh, they are not similar. The genotypes are not the same. They are not both FF. This is, this is uh, homozygous. This is homozygous. These are heterozygous. We later, in the, when we reach to the topic of the inheritance, um, we will explain these ones a bit more. But just know that this happens naturally, and uh, passing of the genes from the uh, they are uh, actually different. Uh, question number five is the same as the previous question. So we have a group of xylem cells that form tissue. Um, the question number six. We're going to make, a bit, make it a bit bigger so we can get a better view of it. Okay, so it says that the diagram shows a palisade mesophyll cell. The palisade mesophyll cells are a kind of special cells that you can find in the leaf of the plants. If I want to show the diagram to you, I have to again switch on the other tab. This is a leaf structure. If you put the leaf from this 
for like the cross section you take. So in the very thin actually space, it's a very small space here. Uh, I love this bit small, but this is a very huge uh, word and um, you know structure here. You see, this actually is that thin part, but it looks like it becomes so much magnified here, yeah? so you can get a better view and image of it. You look, there are different type of the cells. One, these are the upper part of the leaf. That is a waxy, it's a very waxy, it's very shiny, is like oily, so the water, if you pull on it, it doesn't actually penetrate into it. So that is kind of the cuticle, it's called cuticle. And uh, it's uh, water actually proof. I this is called cuticle vaccine layer. And under it, if I give you a better clear like image, and under it are another type of the cells. These are called as the palisade cell. These are palisade cell. The palisade cells they have lots of lots of green pigments or the chlorophylls that are responsible for photosynthesis that's the main job of the leaf of the plant they do photosynthesis they take the light energy and uh, also in the presence of the uh for example in the presence of the carbon dioxide and the water they uh, and also like energy they make a glucose or the food and uh, plus uh, oxygen uh, here also is producing the leaf the next layer there are lots of gap or space or empty spaces between the cells you see it's, it's like a sponge have you seen a sponge when you put it in the water absorbs lots of water in it because there are lots of air, you know, air trap between the cells. This is, this is a lot a hollow, it's like porous, it is without it is empty space. So it's because it needs to, is where the gases they actually travel through, pass through, they enter into the leaf from here, and they reach to the palisade cell to do photosynthesis. This small structure here, this part, the lower part is a lower epidermis and is a lower part of the leaf. And there are small holes or pores there, and we call it as a stomata or stoma. Okay, stomata is the where actually the gas exchange happens, and it's where the gases enter or they leave or also water vapor. Okay, so I don't see any other diagram to show you, maybe like this one, another view of this plant leaf. Oh, these ones are all different diagrams of the different, uh, the same structure of the uh, plant leaf. Now, first we look into the question again. Which structure is not found in an animal cell? So this is a palisade cell. Palisade cell belongs to the plant. So it's a plant cell. The plant cell has a structures um, that. The animal cells, like us, the cells that are inside our body, don't, they don't have, but, some, but, but we share some structures too. So we should know those similarities and the differences between the animal cell and the plant cell to answer this question. What are those structures? Let me show you a diagram first of the two. This is a very simple uh, diagram of the animal cell and the plant cell. And you see those uh, common structures and those ones are all different between the animal cell and like the cells that you can find in the body of the animals, uh, like, like human being a lot. One of the examples that you usually they give in the uh, exam is the uh, liver cell. So the cells of the liver. And uh, for the plants, usually they give palisade cells. So it's a, those cells that I show you. Um, these are examples of the one animal cells, like liver cells, and for the plant cell, parasite cell, parasite, mesophyll cell. Um, the common structures between them, if you look most of them, they have this rounded shape here in the between. So these are nucleus. The nucleus is actually responsible for, is carrying, uh, carrying the genetic information as a control center. So it controls everything 
in and out and inside what is happening inside the cell. It's like a brain of the uh, uh, whole cell. And um, this part, that uh, light blue here and this white color, they are liquid part of the cells that they carry all the organisms are actually uh, immersed into it or floating into it. And this is called as a cytoplasm, cytoplasm. Then we have this membrane that this one also has, but well, because it's quite attached to this yellow part, cannot be seen here. It is very thin uh, compared to the wall, the outer part wall uh, in the uh, plants. So the both uh, the both cells they actually they have this tissue in common, which is the cell membrane. We also call it as a PPM or a partially permeable membrane because uh, it, uh, it is very selective in letting the substances to pass through it. Then, so they are also similar in this regard. Both of them, as you can see, they have mitochondria. It is the center for producing energy. It's like the um, generator, electrical, electricity generator. Yeah. Is energy max energy there, and another similar structure doesn't show here. So there are the similar similarities between these two cells, animals and the plants. But what actually the plant cells they have some structures more than animals that the animals they don't have. If you look at that yellow, uh, very actually regular shape around the cell in the plant cell that this one doesn't have any more cell. That is the cell wall, which is made of the cellulose and is quite rigid, this kind of a material. So it, the purpose is to give shape. The purpose is to give shape to the uh, plant cell. So compared to the animal cells, the animal cell are easily can be actually destroyed by the changes in the pH or the concentration of the um, water uh, in, in their environment, they can burst or they can either uh, easily get plasmalized. But here in the plant cell, the, the plant cell is protected by these very uh, strong wall around it. So the cell wall here protects it and doesn't let it, for example, if it is like in a place in a different conditions, like in a different environments, regarding the concentration of the solutions. So it, it doesn't get so, for example, uh, harmed by these changes in the environment because in the if animal cells, too much water enters into it can easily burst, but for the plant cell, it doesn't happen because the cell wall will product, protect it. Another difference is, is that the vacuole that you see here, or the cell sap, vacuole, um, plant cell has a vacuole, and it's, it's a cell sap or the liquid inside it. And but the in the animal usually it is very small or it doesn't actually exist. So another difference is that another one is that this green pigment that you see here. This is a chloroplast. Chloroplast is like a sac that contains lots of chlorophyll or the pigments in it that are all responsible for photosynthesis or um, to get the uh, energy from the light for photosynthesis. So now get back to the uh, question paper. Which structure is not found in an animal cell? Now you easily should know. Please be careful. I might be purposely a bit bigger so you can see where actually these line ends, which actually where it is pointing to. You should find exactly where it is pointing to. A is pointing to the inner part, side or wall of these. Um, this is not a cell wall because exactly under the cell wall is the cell membrane. So A is a cell membrane, not a cell wall. If it was pointing to the outer part, it means that cell wall. So A is, A is the cell membrane. So all the cells, they have cell membrane, no matter if they are a plant cell or they are animal cell. Then B is pointing just to this empty space here inside. That's the liquid part, as I told you. 
it is called cytoplasm. So B is cytoplasm. So all the uh, cells, they have cytoplasm, regardless of being uh, animal or plant cell. Um, a structure C is pointing to this uh, black dot here, so which is, I told you, is contain genetic information, so it is nucleus. And so all the cells, they have nucleus, just there are some exceptions only, like the red blood cells that are quite specific. And uh, we have D, which is, if you know, all A, B, C are actually not the answer. So D is the answer. But what is D? D is the chlorophyll, that green pigment inside them, responsible for photosynthesis. Human being cells do, do not need photosynthesis to do photosynthesis. So it's only plant cells that they do photosynthesis. So they have these green pigments. So that's the difference. That's the chlorophyll or D is the answer. Um, question number seven is asking which statement is correct for phloem but not for xylem. Um, the thing is that you should know that the phloem first is a living tissue. Xylem is not, is dead. Phloem uh, also is responsible to a carry or transport the product made in the leaves during photosynthesis to send all around the plants for use or to be stored. Usually that one is the amino, uh, amino acids or, uh, or amino acids or transporter or the sucrose or the sugar. That's what, because they are also uh, soluble in the water, so they can be carried all along the uh, vessels in the plant. But in the xylem, uh, we have the transport of the water up to the stem, to the leaves for photosynthesis, and also mineral ions and all these things. And it's a dead tissue. So option A says carries mineral ions, which statement is, in, is correct for phloem, but not for xylem. Mineral ions are actually coming from the ground. The minerals cannot be found in the leaves. They are coming from the soil. The minerals can be found in the soil. So it needs to be absorbed by the uh, root hair cells, then go to the stem and so that they that vessel responsible to carry it off the plant is xylem, not phloem. So this is not the answer. Uh, it carries a starch. You should be very uh, careful. A starch is a very big, I can't say, the sugar molecule carbohydrate. So it's a very heavy. It's insoluble too. So it settles down somewhere. It's uh, stored somewhere. It doesn't. It cannot be carried uh, into the plant. So it just that's the sugar or the sucrose molecules that are carried everywhere by these vessels and then wherever they go if it is necessary to store them there will be a store change into the starch and more starch molecules and they settle there until they are being used later so this is not the answer so the phloem doesn't carry starch either xylem the most they are not responsible for carrying this heavy or insoluble molecule because it's not soluble also in the water see it carries sucrose yes um because the sucrose is the product of photosynthesis, so it is made during a, a photosynthesis in the leaves. So, uh, and um, we call it as a translocation, this, this phenomenon. It's called translocation. Translocation means the product of the photosynthesis are being carried out, okay, to everywhere in the plant to be used. What are they? One of them is the sucrose or sugar or glucose. And uh, so it's very important. And also amino acids. Everybody we don't have amino acid options. So this is the answer. I can stop here or can, if I want to explain to you or explain why these are so wrong, but the answer is C for the time being. You should uh, know that. But D by D is wrong because I told you, because phloem is a living tissue. A dead tissue or no longer living tissue is xylem. So that's the answer is C for this question. Question number eight, what is the correct order of increasing size of the following structures? Read the question very well. In order of increasing size, it means from the left to right side, we have the, the one on the right hand should be the 
uh, with the largest, largest actual structure. And the one on the left side should be the smallest. Read this one carefully. Don't make mistake. Okay, so we should find that structure which is the largest on, at the end of this, uh, actually this chain. Okay, and it's of the line on the right side. By looking at these options, chromosome liver on white blood cells. I know that the liver is a very big organ. By the naked eye, without the microscope or anything, I can see it. Okay. So I expect to put this between these, so if I want to select the liver, it should be the largest, definitely. So I place it on the right side here. So if it is at the end of this chain, so the answer without even further investigation is B. Because no one else, in no one of these options, you can see liver here at the end of the chain. So the answer is B. I want to discuss further between chromosome and white blood cells. Chromosome are smallest because the white blood cells can be seen with a lower magnification, but the chromosome, you need to uh, get an electronic uh, microscope or to, um, to see under higher, for example, magnifications uh, in, on the, in today uh, under the microscope. So the chromosome is the smallest one, then is white blood cells, red blood cells, plasma, cells, platelets, and all these things, then we reach to liver. Liver is a very big organ. So, and also don't make mistake, don't choose this, the other one either. This is a quarter wrong too, but don't be tricked by like liver like this. See, read the question first, the order of increasing size. It means a small, this is a smallest, then a small, then become largest. Smallest, small, largest. So B is the option. Question number nine. Let me see, most of you are familiar with it, perhaps in the mathematics. Wow, what actually this diagram mean? This diagram is called as a Venn diagram, V-E-N-N -N diagram. It means that it shows what two things they have in common and what they don't have. The shaded area or the area that they overlap is that's what they share together. Let me show you. These are the different examples of the Venn diagram. I mean, I have seen it in the mathematics too. And this is the simpler one. This is what you saw there. There are two circles that they share some, you know, one part of the uh, contents together here at this part. We can shade it, we can color it. It means that these two, they share something together. For example, in this example, there are two fruits, banana and lemon. And then we say, we write the properties of them, like it is sour, bumpy, yellow, and it's a fruit. And we say banana. Banana also is smooth, is sweet, is yellow, and is a fruit. I, they have written yellow and fruit here in the middle, the, what they share, because it is the, actually the, what they have in common, what the properties that they share together, what is similar in them. Both of them are yellow, both of them are fruit. But what is different? Lemon is sour. It's bumpy, but the banana is smooth and it's sweet. Okay, so in the Venn diagram, the area that they overlap together is what they share, the properties that they share together. For example, here they have these two share at this point together, P and M, the whole thing. And P and F they share at this point only because they overlap here. And this one is what F and M they share. But all of them, P, M, and F, they share these properties, what you see in this triangle here. Because all of them, this is very, all of them, they have overlap. 
you can see one part of F here, you can see one part of M here, you can find see one part of P here. So this is the shared area for P, F, and M. Okay? But here, for example, is only P and F they share, but M is not included, it's not sharing that property. Yeah. And here is for only P and M. But here is F and M, not P. But here in the middle, it means all of them they share these properties. So this is called as Venn diagram, and you can see here V, E, M. I go back to the question. So which cell structure is from the shaded area? So from the shaded area, it means that you have to look for that structure that they share together. What are the animals and the plants? So what are the similarities between animals and plants? Do they both have cell membrane? So I know the answer is yes. Both of them, they have cell membrane. They share this, so it can come from this shaded area. So this is the answer. But I just want to discuss the other one with you to prove why they are wrong. Okay, but you don't continue at the exam because it wastes your time. Once you found the answer, stick around it. If you were not sure, just skip this question, go to the next question, answer all when you had time, come back on this. Or you can just do this, find those ones that they don't share, omit them, and then you will reach to the answer. Cell wall. Do they both have cell wall? No, only plant cell they have cell wall. So I have to write cell wall here. Chloroplasts only can be found in the plant cell, not in the animal cells, because they don't do photosynthesis. And large vacuo only can be seen in the plant cell, not in the animal cell. The animals don't have vacuo. So this is the answer for this, which is A. Again, we are comparing one animal cell and one plant cell. Animal cell, like nerve cell, nerve cell, the animals, they have nerve system, nervous system. In the plant, you don't have nervous system. Do you have? You don't have it. So the palisade cell, palisade cell is a kind, of, as I showed you before in the previous question, are Cells in the leaf of the plant that are responsible for photosynthesis, they have lots of chlorophyll in them. And nerve cells that are conduct um, nerve pole impulses for us to show some reactions to the surrounding and the change in the environment. So this is uh, in the animal cell. So now we want to uh, compare again a uh, plant and animal cell. Only the palisade cell has it, so only the plant cell has it. This is structure, which one? Cell membrane. Both, both plant and animal cell, they have cell membrane, so this is not the answer. Cytoplasm, both animal and the plant cell, they have cytoplasm, so this is not the answer. Nucleus, both of them, they have nucleus, so this is not the answer. Vacuum, yes, only plant cell, or this is palisade cell has a vacuo, a very big vacuo. So this is the answer. 10 is D. I will go to the next question, which is question number 11. Um, in this question, again, we have a palisade cell, a cell from the leaf of the plant, which is responsible for photosynthesis repeated many times, so you won't forget. The diagram shows the palisade mesophyll cell. In which labeled port does photosynthesis occur and where is a starch stored? Usually, uh, I, I told you that in this structure, so W is the nucleus, X is to make it bigger is a cytoplasm, Y is chlorophyll, Z is a vacuole, is a very big vacuole or cell sap. Photosynthesis always occur in the green pigments, which is Y. Happens in the Y. Starch also is a starch. So um, usually in that one. So a starch um, is stored in the usually a starch grains, and or they can be stored in the chloroplast. Um, but inside the vacuoles, uh, there is a, is a storage of the food molecules, water and salt, but not the starch. And um, as you can see here, so W, 
uh, contains genetic information, no source at all. In the X, which is cytoplasm, you don't see any uh, storage grain. And there are inside the storage vesicles that are not there inside the sacs. Or they are contained inside the Y, which is chlorophyll. Yeah, so the answer should be Y. For the Z, I said it is uh, usually the, in the food, salts, and water can be stored here inside the Z, which is a vacuole. So the answer is the photosynthesis occur in the chlorophyll, which is Y, and a storage is stored in the Y, which is again chlorophyll. So answer is D. Number 12, Mitro describes a root hair cell. Let's have a look into the structure of the root hair cells. Um, this is a plant, as you can see in the diagram, and these are the root and these tiny projections here, like a hair-like uh, structures on the roots that are called as a root hairs. And these root hairs, each of the hair is connected to one cell. So this is each cell, if you make that hair bigger, you see this is structure. This is one cell. This is a special cell that we call it as a root hair cell. This structure, these hair-like things that you're seeing here, is just uh, a change in the side. It is a cell membrane. Um, the cell membrane of the uh, cell has changed its shape. So to become actually, uh, to do its job better, which is absorption of the uh, nutrients from the soil. Why it makes it better to work and function? Because the longer this structure, it may give more contact with the surrounding. So there are more uh, nutrients are in contact with the hair, root hair, or the, this cell. So they can be easily diffused inside the cell or faster or better uh, by osmosis. So you see that the water and minerals are ions that are inside the soil, they, they fuse inside the cell through the root hair cell, which is very long and gives a very good contact and large surface area it has. And then it's passed from one cell to another and then it goes into the, uh, as you can see here, this is the root. So it goes inside the vascular bundle here. This is a vessel, that xylem. Usually they, are, they go to the xylem, okay. And from xylem, it goes up to the plant. We go back to the paper, which wrote the scars of red hair cell. So allows water to pass into the plant? Of course, yes. And just the purpose of that, in having that root hair cell in the plant is to absorb water, mineral nutrients, everything, send it to the plant for growth. Increase the surface. Of, so except D, all are correct. Huh? For timing A, B, C are accepted, but D is rejected. This is not the answer because it's put um, across here. It means that it doesn't, it does not allow water to pass through the plant. So this isn't wrong. They increase the surface uh, area of the root. Which one? So between these three now, A and B and C. Does it increase the surface area of the root? Yes, it increases the surface area because that's very long and it is the material or more in contact with it with the root and they are faster and better can be uh, diffused inside the root. So both of these answers now, A and B are correct, but C is rejected again. Now between A and B, which one is correct? Loses water by transpiration? And transpiration is like evaporation. It's like losing water. It's like sweating in you. Does it really happen in the root? No, the root purpose is under the ground. It's not in contact with the air to lose, to, to, to evaporation happen there. It's just the purpose of the root is to take maximum amount of water and the nutrients that it can. It just supports absorption of the things. It's not for giving out water or minerals out of the plant. It's not for removing it from the plant. It's for taking it in so it doesn't lose anything. So B is rejected and the answer is A. Sorry, uh, sorry, the A is rejected and answer is B because uh, this is wrong. So it should be cross here. So answer for the 12 is B. It loses water by transmission is wrong. It doesn't. So B is the correct answer. Question number 13. Three cell structures are listed, cell wall, cytoplasm, and nucleus. So all the things that you can see inside the cells. Which structures are found in parasite cells and in liver cells? 
what a palisade cell is, like we said, is a plant cell, liver cell is an animal cell. What do they have in common? What structure are found in the both? This one and that one. So cell wall, no, it's only in a plant. So one shouldn't be the answer, inside the answer. So I already reject A and B. So between C and D, which one? Do they have both cytoplasm? Yes. Do they have both nucleus? Yes. So two and three should be in the answer both. So I reject D because it's written only three and it's wrong. So our answer is C. Gradually, I think it becomes easier now after knowing the basic. You can answer the question by yourself. Question number 14, the diagram shows two plant cells, P and Q. Okay. One after, what is the difference? Well, oh, I see here there are a lot of rounded things here, but there is no. What are those rounded things now we have learned? They should be palette, they should be chlorophyll, green pigment inside them. How does cell P differ from it? It has no cell wall. Where is the cell wall? Most of them they have cell wall here. It gives them shape. The outer wall is a cell wall. It has no chloroplast. Yes. Chloro chloroplast, these are these green pigments or chloroplast. The cell P doesn't have. Cell P doesn't have chloroplast, these ones. So this should be the answer. I just want to go further and read for you why I reject C and D too. No nucleus, both of them they have nucleus. You see that dark spot here? There's nucleus. This is, has carries genetic information or DNA or chromosome. It has no vacuole. Most of them, they have vacuole. You see that empty space here? It looks empty, but there is a cell sap or there's a liquid and water in it. Okay? So, only answer is B. Question number 15, the diagram shows different types of the cells. You can see them. This is a, by looking at it, I know that this is a red blood cell, which is inside your bloodstream. This is animal cell. This is an animal cell because it doesn't have that shape, regular shape, it was irregular. This is, this is the cell wall that gives, gives shape to the plant cell. These two should be plant cell. These two should be animal cell. Okay. Which structure do all these cells have? Cell membrane? Of course, all the cells, they have cell membrane. Cell wall? No, only plant cell they have. Hmm? So the answer for timing is A, because all of them, they have cell membrane. This is correct. Do they have cell wall? No, this is not the answer. Only plants are only this one and this one. They have cell wall. You see, they have a very definite shape. Chloroplast? Only this one have. Or the plant cell they can have. Nucleus? Only these have, these have, these have. But the one, of course, the red blood cells, they don't have nucleus. Never, ever. The only cells, the special cells inside their bloodstream. They carry oxygen and the gases, but they don't have any, any nucleus. So the answer is A. 16. Hey, this is not an animal or anything. This is not an organism. This is a cell, a specialized cell inside the body of the male, the man. So this is in the testes it's produced and it's called as a sperm cell. The sperm cell, we carry the genetic information uh, from the male and is a reproduction, the reproduction. So this is a male gamete or sperm cell. Which term describes the level of organization of these gametes? So we should first know what the level of organization is. Look at this diagram. The first level of organization, the smallest part of these um, body of the organism is cell. One cell, a stop to the cell. The cells, they have different shapes. They have different features. But the similar cells, when they gather together, they place together in one, they are gathered and attached to each other in one place, they form a tissue. So this is a tissue. Because there are a group of similar cells, the cells that all they look all the same, with the same structure, the same features. Why did they gather together? Because they make to make a tissue. Because to make they want to make a same to perform the same job. They have the same purpose. They have the same aim to become a tissue. For example, it can be your skin. 
It can be a tissue of the muscle. It can be a tissue, for example, like the, uh, that what you see in the plant. This is a cute, if you remember the cuticle, the waxy layer, they're all, all similar cells. Or the palisade cells, all similar cells. So the uh, palisade cells, all that group of the cells is making that tissue. The tissue is a palisade mesophyll the cell. Then the tissues, the, all the similar tissues, they gather together and then, sorry, the, the, the different, the tissues, they collect to each other in the same place and then, and then make the organ in the higher level. For example, that organ, like we have different tissues, but they want to do the same job, perform the same job. They have the same function at the end, the same aim. The aim of that is to make the, uh, this organ. This organ, this leaf, for example, here, is made of the different uh, group of the cells or the tissues. Why? To make it to do photosynthesis, to absorb light, to get water and they exchange gases. This is the job of them. They all work together, this tissue, to perform the same job, which is photosynthesis, and provide food and energy for the whole plant. And here we have this tissue, for example, it can be muscles in the heart. And they, there are different tissues. And the, for example, they gather together to perform this, to make the same structure like organ, like heart. And this heart is responsible for pumping, a pumpage of the blood around the body. But the heart is, shouldn't be alone in this system. It works with the other, uh, other organs. What are they? Blood streams, the blood vessels, and also it's blood, the blood inside it, the blood cells. So the different organs, they actually come together to perform uh, to, for the same, for example, purpose. The purpose is to uh, pumpage of the blood, to send blood from one place to another place. So the heart and the vessels and all these things, they together, they make an organ system. Here, the leaf, the leaves all gather to make an organ system. And then again, all the organ system, they collect together to perform a job to make the body of the organism, the whole body. It can be a plant, it's on the organ system, we have roots, we have a stem, we have leaves, we have all these things. So it is a complete organism. And here, a horse is made up of different or organ systems. It can be, uh, here is a, circular, a circulatory system. It can be digestive system. It can be nervous system. It can be um, all those different organs, organs they collect to each other together and then make a system and this system together then make the whole bo the body of the organism. Okay, so this is the levels of organization. Now we go back to uh, uh, now we back to this paper and we see that in this structure, so we have cell, organ, organism, and tissue. This is not a tissue. This is not an organism. This is not an organ. This is only one cell, which is called a um, sperm cell. So the answer is A. Okay. So for 17, which description of xylem is correct again? A cell used for absorption. This is not for absorption. You remember the xylem cells? They are hollow, they are empty. Uh, a tissue used for support? Yes, that's the answer. An organ system used for conduction? No. There is a non organ system for conduction. Um, an organ used for transport? Um, why it is the, it is it is for conduction? It is for transfer. Why is it not an organ? It is not organ system. Xylem. The point is that xylem is a tissue. So the answer should be B. A tissue used for the support. Actually, this is correct. This is coming from conduction. It conducts water. It actually transfers water and the nutrients. Well, it is not organ. It is not organ system. It is tissue. So that's the point. Okay, it's a trick here that they have made for you to deceive you. So you have to be very careful. To choose the correct answer to so B is the answer. 17 is B. Question number 18. We have again, you should know that it's a plant cell. Just by looking at it, it has definite proper shape, regular shape. There is a cell around it, so it's a plant shape. And what label line is not correct? 
so A is a chloroplast. I'm just make it bigger and magnify it. Okay. The chloroplast, yes, it's exactly pointing to the chloroplast, that green pigment. Is that the vacuo? Yes, C is correct. Is that the cell wall? Yes, this thing is rounded, is a cell wall. And this is a cell membrane. It's pointing to the outer part. This is wrong. The cell membrane is inside, is in contact with the cytoplasm. It's closer to the inner part, is, is in contact with the cytoplasm inside. It protects the inside of the cell. So B is incorrect, not correct. Question number 19, how does a liver cell differ from a palisade cell? Again, palisade cell is a plant, liver is an animal. So how do you compare a liver has, or an animal cell has a membrane? Yes, a an animal cell has a vacuole? No. Uh, a, a liver cell has a no cell wall? Correct, a liver cell has no cytoplasm. Liver cell? has cytoplasm, has a membrane, uh, doesn't have. So how does it differ from the palisade cell? A liver cell has no cell wall. Okay, because liver cell doesn't have a vacuole, it has a cell membrane, it has, it has a cytoplasm, but the correct answer is that a liver cell has no cell wall. That's how it makes a difference between these two. The difference between animal cell and plant cell it has, this was the correct answer, C. Now we go to 20. The diagram shows structure taken from two different, organ two different organisms, P, Q, R, S, which structures have the main function of transport. So this is, a, uh, this is one organism, P, I can see. And this is a red blood cell. Again, this is a plant, plant, and S also. Okay. Which is looked as the main function of transport. This should be uh, the, the vessels, plant vessels. P and R. So this is a cell. Is not actually the job is not transport. This is a leaf, not the transport. B, P and S. P and S. So this is the answer, but this is not the answer. This is the latest for photosynthesis. This is for the transport of the water. This is, should be xylem. Uh, and Q and, the answer should be Q and S because Q is a red blood cell responsible for carrying oxygen and the exchange of the other gases like the carbon dioxide. And the tra it transports oxygen gas inside your bloodstream to send it to the cells. So its job is transport. And S is to, um, the xylem vessel transport um, water to the, up to the plant for the photosynthesis. So the answer should be Q and S. The only one which has a Q and S is D, so D is the answer. 21, at which level of organization is a root? Is it organ, organ system, organism, or a tissue? Which one? So uh, now you should know because we have already done this many times and you should be now able to answer uh, this question by yourself about the number 21, uh, for example. Um, you, you know that the, what actually it means now uh, by organ system and all this. So the answer should be, it is a tissue. Root is a tissue because there are a group of similar cells and they are sitting together in one place and for the same, doing the same job. And then the next one is a diagram. So I, the answer was D, the diagram shows a liver cell and this liver cell is an animal cell. So which features are present in this cell and also in most plant cells? Um, it has a cell membrane and a cytoplasm. Of course, they show. So without even reading this, the rest of the answers, I know that the answer should be uh, question number, uh, the part is option A. The cell membrane has and cytoplasm, but cell sap is vacuole, sap vacuole is only in the plant cells and cell wall is for the plant cell, cell wall for the plant cell, sap vacuole for the plant cell. So they're all for the plants because we are having in common what, is, what are they sharing with the plants? So that should be a cell membrane and cytoplasm. I think you have answered this question many times.
which structure is present in the root cell but not in the liver cell again? Which structure is in the plant cell but not in the animal cell? In the plant cell, we have chloroplast. Okay, we have cell wall. We have uh, we have all these things, but in the but not in the liver cell. In the liver cell, we have nucleus. There are glycogen granules, and also. So this question has got problem because both of the A and B are correct. They are the answer because. A uh, liver cell, which is an animal cell, doesn't have a cell wall, and also at the same time doesn't have a chloroplast because it doesn't do photosynthesis. So A and B should be the answer. So this um, exam question has got problem. 24, which description of the heart is correct? The heart is an organ containing several systems which form part of the circulatory tissue. It's not a circulatory, it's tissue. We have circulatory uh, system. So even by looking at this, Thing that is it circulatory tissue is not tissue circulatory system tissue organ it's not organ it's not tissue it's system so without even reading the rest of the question I know that this should be the answer B is the answer the heart is an organ yes heart is not a system the heart is an organ so between A and B again we want to choose containing several tissues which form part of the circulatory system so this is the answer so make sure we have circulatory system, nervous system, they're all systems. They are not tissue, they are not organ. And the heart is an organ, is not a system. Okay. 25, again, we have different cells here. Which two cells contain cellulose and a vacuole? So cellulose and vacuole, they should be plant, they should be plant cells. Which ones are plant cells? They should have a, a fixed shape. A cell wall around it, or either a chloroplast can be seen. This has a chloroplast, it has a cell wall. This is a root hair cell. They both come from the plant cell, so they are uh, plant cells, so they have cellulose and lacro. But how about these two? This is a white blood cell, which is inside your bloodstream. It's responsible for your immunity and immune in the immune system. It fights against the germs, pathogens in your body. And this is a red blood cell which carries oxygen into your blood. So these are both of them belong to the body of the animal. So they are animal cells. These are plant cells. So, so one and two, this is actually missed. Two is missed here. So A is the answer, one and two. So one, jump somewhere else. So A is the answer, uh, one and two. Uh, question number 26, the diagram shows two blood cells from a leaf. Which labeled part would be found in the liver cell, in the animal cell? Which part also you can find in the animal cell? Do you find chloroplast in the animal cell? No. Do you find a vacuole in the animal cell? No. Do you find cell wall in the animal cell? No. How about this? Yeah, this is the nucleus, control center, the brain of the cell. Yes, it has, all of them have. So answer is A. Yes, and that ends off the end of the question paper. Hope you call question paper for this chapter, which is Organization of the Organism, Chapter 2 of your IGCSE Biology. Thank you very much. Stay safe and healthy.